Hmm. All right, so this video, um, I want to try and what I hope is blow your mind um, because I feel like there's this part of the books that nobody really has picked up on. I wrote about this in my big essay that I haven't yet to publish, and I just feel like it's big enough to where we should start talking about it as its own separate little detail. And let me explain by way of asking a question. Do you think that Melisandre can predict the arrival of messages by Raven and their contents? And um, I want to tell you that she does it apparently twice in A Dance with Dragons. The, the obvious one is the pink letter, right? Because she says, look to the sky, John. All of your questions will be answered. And... Basically, if you go look down that, that's the pink letter, of course. If you go read it, um, um, he does get all his questions answered, meaning she basically predicted that it would tell her, tell him the fate of Stannis, uh, the Spearwives, Mance Raider, his sister. All of those things that he asked about to her are answered by the pink letter. Now, you might be wondering, well, she does it twice. What's the other example? Let me read it to you because I have it here on my Kindle. Um, it basically, it's uh, John's, I believe, eighth or ninth chapter, and it says, Queen Solis descended upon Castle Black with her daughter and her daughter's fool, her serving girls and lady companions, and a retinue of knights, sworn swords, and men-at-arms, fifty strong. Queen's men all, Jon Snow knew. They may attend Solis, but it is Melisandre they serve. The Red Priestess had warned him of their coming almost a day before the Raven arrived from Eastwatch with the same message. My point is... This is a second example where Melisandre literally goes to John and says, hey, guess what? You're about to get a raven that's going to tell you X, Y, Z. Now, this is the interesting part. Do you think that that substantiates the idea that she can predict the arrival of messages? I would say between this and the pink letter, it seems pretty true. Uh, what I wrote in my essay is that if you think about it, I mean, she's basically doing that. If, it, if you want to argue that this is where she's not really using magic, she's using some other means to, to do this, I almost want to say that I could see that as a possibility, but I really, for the life of me, can't figure out how that would work in a fashion that is less convoluted than just believing that she has some sort of magical ability to do this. Um, you, your mileage may vary. Uh, but, you know, this, the idea that she could predict the arrival of these messages, I believe, raises two very important questions um, and uh, they're both really cool but let's talk about I'm trying to decide which one I want to talk about first okay let's talk about um, uh, the pink letter the pink letter is interesting because let's say she predicted the arrival of that message don't you find it interesting that the message basically says Stannis is toast he's dead I have his sword all his friends are dead we whoop their asses and you would assume that the Red Priestess, who basically spent her entire life predicting that Stannis was going to whoop ass, would probably have a little bit more going on in her head than worrying about Jon in the moment of Jon's final chapter. But literally, all she does is say, hey, you know, your doom approaches, be smart, keep your wolf, all of this. She's, uh, she's doing all of this stuff for Jon, and she betrays no interest in worrying about uh, what's going on um, with Stannis. And you might say, well, okay, maybe she really can't predict all of that. But I want to say that if you look closely at that chapter, I believe you can tell there's another, in my mind, implicit uh, uh, piece of evidence that suggests that Melisandre knew something was up. And it's not from her. It's from the one person that Melisandre tells most everything to, who basically can't keep her fucking mouth shut and tells everybody. And that is Solis. Um, that chapter uh, really marks this uh, moment when John observes how much more security there is around the queen. She's got all of her protectors. She's got all of the security outside of the castle. And then when John leaves, he has to basically pass by guards on every single level as he descends the, cat, uh, the, the tower. So it seems, it, it seems to me that security is heightened. Now, granted, there's this brief uh, moment where uh, John mentions that Tormund says, oh, well, it's because she's just afraid of us big, tough wildlings wanting to run off with her. And that may be true, but 
uh, I think it's a very well-established thing that Martin sometimes throws things in like that to give you a clue, but also kind of reveal that the character is not uh, paying attention to a particular detail that if you take it and look at it from another perspective, might actually be like a real clue about something else. Granted, I'll admit that that's not actual proof, but it seems to me pretty suggestive that maybe Solis knows something that we're not being told. Furthermore, we also have Solis's dismissiveness of everything related to what John wants to do. Like when John says, hey, I'm going to go to hard home. Um, and she's like, ah, that's folly. You're an idiot. You know, I hope that you go and like we get a new leader. It'll be great. Um, you know, that same dismissiveness. I mean, we want to just basically write off Solis and say she's kind of an idiot. But the last time she had this level of smug, like dismissiveness, it almost always stems from something Melisandre said. Um, going back to the prologue in A Clash of Kings, uh, this is kind of an entire tangent I don't really want to get into, but I believe that it's uh, more likely that uh, Melisandre predicted Crescent's death, and that is why, uh, uh, that's why Solis tormented him when he finally crawled up to the big party and did everything in his power to try and stop Melisandre and then ended up dying. Um, Solis was treating him like shit because that was basically the prediction she had, Melisandre had. So I feel like Solis's behavior kind of betrays a little bit that there's something going on, especially when the fact that uh, Melisandre has even her two guards there as well. So like, why is there so much security in this ca in uh, Castle Black? Like maybe they know, uh, sorry, not Castle Black, but the King's Tower. Like maybe they know something's up. Maybe Melisandre is already aware of the contents of the letter. I mean, after all, how could she tell John that all of your questions will be answered if she didn't know, in some ways, the contents of the letter? It seems a little weird to say that she just knows that it's going to answer her his problems, but she has no specifics. When you go back to this letter about the arrival of Solis, and she knew that it was basically saying, hey, I'm on my way. Uh, it just, that doesn't make sense. So... Now I want to take a moment and switch, and I want to talk about a different letter. And it's this letter that I like to call the letter from Deepwood Mott. Um, I will see if I can find it real quick. It's the letter that John reads when he comes back. Uh, I believe it's this one. Yeah, it's... Now let's see if I can get to the letter itself real quick. I'm going to scan through an entire chapter. It is right there. Okay. Now, we go back. Yeah. So this is the letter that uh, John basically, he rides out to the Weirwood Grove north of the wall, swears in the people, has the encounter with the wildlings and the giant, comes back. And when he comes back, he like comes into his quarters, throws his uh, cloak on the wall, and he sees a letter on the table. And um, I don't want to read all of it, but uh, let's see. I want to read one part. It says, And word has come to us that Roose Bolton moves towards Winterfell with all his power, there to wed his bastard to your half-sister. He must not be allowed to restore the castle to its former strength. We march against him. Arnulf Karstark and Mors Umber will join us. I will save your sister if I can and find a better match for her than Ramsay Snow. You and your brothers must hold the wall until I can return. So the reason I bring this up is because, again... Let's say Melisandre can predict the arrival of messages and their contents. This letter, um, in my opinion, might be really, really insightful because this is the only time uh, Stannis talks about save your sister. It's very peculiar, right? Because let's go back to every other chapter before this. Stannis never mentions once wanting to save Arya. But you know who does? It's Melisandre. Melisandre literally says, let us, let me save your sister in the exact same way. And she says it in the, this is John's, I think, seventh point of view chapter. She says it in uh, John's sixth point of view chapter. And I believe she also says it in her own point of view chapter, which is between these two chapters. So my point is, what if Melisandre predicted the arrival of this message? Maybe she knew or took that as some signal that she had to participate in launching uh, Mance's rescue mission. I don't really know for sure, but it's really peculiar. Um, 
you know, the, the notion that um, Mance, sorry, that Melisandre could predict the arrival of these messages and their contents, it goes a long way to answering one of the main questions that I had with uh, A Dance with Dragons. And that is the uh, overwhelming significance that letters and messages and seals have taken on in this fifth book. Um, in this book, we have a lot of really interesting asides and detail paid attention to messaging that wasn't important in the previous books. We have Lady Dustin talking to Theon about the gray rats who read and write our messages even when we can't write them ourselves. We've got uh, lots of these letters where we get the whole text of it, plus, uh, you know, lots of individual messages. Now, one of the things about this Deepwood message is that there's a lot of stuff that's inconsistent and doesn't make sense to me. I used to believe that there was some sort of weird cryptic or like steganographic code embedded in this message because there's so much of it that doesn't make sense. And furthermore, I often wondered how would that message, if there was a secret message in here, how would it get to the intended party, whether it was Melisandre or um, uh, somebody else. But anyways, one of my main theories for a long time was that Devin Seaworth, because he is Melisandre's assistant, handpicked to stay behind Andy's literate, might have something to do with like reading these messages and taking it back. But that's all superfluous if the truth is that um, Melisandre can just predict the arrival of these messages and maybe even their contents. But just to explain, I want to share some of the odd parts about this Deepwood message and just give you an idea of how weird some of this stuff is. Um, it says... Okay, one part it says, the captains, knights, notable warriors, and others of high birth we shall ransom or make other use of. The rest I mean to hang. There's a whole lot that doesn't make sense here. One is, does Stannis hang people? No. Two, knights. We're talking about the Ironborn. How many Ironborn knights are there? I can't remember because it's been a while, but uh, there's basically only one f major family that follows the, the seven on the Iron Islands. Um, the rest aren't really knights in any traditional sense, like no oils and septums involved. Um, there's not a lot of notable warriors. There's a lot of low-class warriors. But then it says others of high birth. Besides Asha, you really only have, um, what's his name? The guy, Tr uh, uh, Christopher Botley. He's really the only other noble there. So, uh, like, what are they going to do? And more importantly he doesn't really seem to kill anybody. It seems like everybody died and then he left like the nine or so survivors in the jail at Deepwood Mott and he didn't really care. So none of that really makes a whole lot of sense. Um, you know, then there's some interesting details like um, he talks about the number of men and he gives a lot of information away. He talks about the 5,000 numbers the 5,000 strong people that are coming to join his forces. Um, he talks about uh, the the position of Roose Bolton moving to uh, Winterfell. He talks about, his, uh, you know, Arya. The point is, Stannis is a king. He has lots of stuff going on. He doesn't need to say all of this shit to Jon Snow, especially if he knew that Jon Snow really needs to pay attention to his vows. Why would he tell his, why would he poison John's mind with knowledge about his sister. Doesn't that seem a bit like, hi, I just want to fuck you up. Here, here's what's going on with your sister. It just, it's just frustrating. And last but not least, and I don't really know what to make of this, when John, when Stannis signs the letter and it gives all of the titles, 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 one of the last ones it gives is Protector of the Realm. Now, Protector of the Realm, um, it's been a long time since I wrote about this, and I don't know if Fire and Blood or some of the retcons that Martin has done might affect this, but uh, I did a lot of reading before, and the earliest use I could find of Protector of the Realm as a titer went to Jaehaerys I, the, the conciliator. And uh, I believe it has something to do with basically being like the head of, like, it'd be like the equivalent of being like the head of the Church of England. Protector of the Realm is like a... Uh, so given to you by the Holy Septon, uh, the High Septon, and it's supposed to be like indicative of you leading the religion. So uh, I always thought that perhaps it was weird that that title was on that letter. Again, there's all these weird things about this letter that made me think that there was some sort of secret message. But perhaps the only real secret message in this letter has to do with John, uh, with rescuing Arya, and perhaps with knowledge of her ability to predict a letter, Melisandre knew, hey. I know this letter's coming. It's going to say, we're going to try and save Arya. We know she's going to be in Winterfell. 
that gave her everything she needed to have uh, Mance and her dial up the effort to get permission to go do the, the rescue operation. Again, you could disagree, but I think fundamentally, the idea that she could predict the letters and their contents seems pretty straightforward to me. Yes, it's magic, and yes, it seems a bit, like, weird, but it was established first with that first letter about the arrival of Solis. Um, and going back to uh, the pink letter, uh, you know, if you want to talk a little bit more about the implications of her being able to predict um, the contents of the letter, you have to wonder why... Why does everything play out the way it does? Again, why does she not notify anybody? Why is the security heightened at the castle? Um, if they knew that Stannis was dead, why is there no reaction? Again, there's always been that theory out there that Stannis plans on faking his death. And what this makes you wonder is if perhaps people knew about it. Um, I don't want to get too much into that. That's something I want to kind of gather my thoughts for a later video because it's a huge tangent. But I hope that just this notion about reading the letters and what it might mean has given you something to think about. Thanks.